Hello and welcome to my Dark Souls 2 Infinite Soul Vessel Guide. In this video I'll be showing you how to get an infinite number of soul vessels. This works for both Dark Souls 2 Vanilla Vidigen and Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. As many of you know, the soul vessel is a handy little item that allows the player to respec their character as they see fit. This allows players to fix mistakes that they've made during the level up process or to simply re-evaluate their character to use different playstyles. As handy as the soul vessel is, there is one major flaw, in that there is a very limited number of them. Or is there? This video will be showing you how to get an infinite number of soul vessels fairly easily. A word of warning though, much like buying crack from a dealer, the first one's free but the rest will cost you. You will need one bonfire aesthetic for every one extra soul vessel that you want. So without further ado, Let's begin. To start this off, you must clear No Man's Wharf and defeat the Flexile Sentry. Then, journey on the boat and come towards the Exile Holding Cell in the Lost Bastille. Once you are there, you need only follow the path laid out in this video. You will need a few things for this, of course. One, you will need one Pharos Lockstone. You shall only need one for the entire process. Two, you'll need one sort of one decent ranged weapon. This can be a bow or a pyromancy flame or anything really. And three, you will need a fire weapon. By fire weapon I mean a fire bomb, fire arrows, fire bolts, fire bow, or some sort of fire infused weapon. You will also need your your primary melee weapon, of course, but that's a given. Anyway, just follow the path detailed in this video, that red phantom should not appear unless you have a new game plus or your bonfire intensity, ugh, intensity is above one. As you're crossing this wall, various archers will start firing at you. Unless you're playing a new game plus or higher, they shouldn't do too much damage, but if like me you're a new game plus four, they can be quite difficult. Also, if you're playing the Scholar of the First Sin edition, that area will likely have a pursuer just outside, so be careful. Use some sort of ranged weapon, in my case, Pyromancy Flame, to destroy the mummy behind those barricades, as he can become quite a pain. Next, once you're in this courtyard, an army of dogs will start to attack you. Once you have killed them, simply leave and enter the courtyard again. This time, come all the way over here, so you can bait a royal swordsman to jump down from his platform. Again, the royal swordsman shouldn't be much of a problem for a decent player. Just remember, do not hit the rock in that well, because this will make this whole process very difficult. Claim up this ladder. and assassinate this royal swordsman. If you've taken damage like I have, heal up and jump down here. Be very careful if you're using a fire weapon as you can accidentally blow yourself up, like I did. From here you'll be attacked by two royal swordsmen. Once you've killed them, this whole process is more or less done. Climb up this ladder and collect the item at the very top. Jump down onto this small ledge. If you destroyed the barrels with a fire weapon like I did, you'll find the arch drake robes and arch drake shield. If not, there should be barrels in front of that little L cave, so just use a fire weapon on it. Now I've already done this, but once you come into this area, you'll find a pharaoh's lockstone. Insert your Pharos Lockstone into the slot, and it should illuminate the room, as well as activate the Pharos door. You'll find various iron chests in here that will not respawn, but they're not really worthwhile. Once 
Would you have killed what is essentially a throwing knife wielding xenomorph? Run to the face on the wall. If you've used your forest lockstone, you'll know what I'm talking about. While it's not been shown here, make sure you hit the wall. Inside there will be a wooden chest containing a soul vessel. That is how you can get your first free soul vessel in this area. If you want to get more, simply return to the bonfire and burn a bonfire aesthetic. Thankfully, enemies will only get tough up to New Game Plus 8 standards, which means after you've used 7 bonfire aesthetics, enemies will not get stronger. But all the loot within wooden chests and lying around the floor will respawn. Meaning that you can essentially farm an infinite number of soul vessels, providing you have enough bonfire aesthetics. So everyone, I just want to say thank you for watching my Dark Souls 2 guide. Feel free to stick around though and check out my channel, as I will be uploading more Dark Souls 2 content and guides in the near future. But while we're here, a few important things to know about this particular method. One, the Pursuer in the Lost Bastille in the area we're talking about will not spawn unless you head towards Macduff's workshop. If you follow the path detailed in the video, you should be fine. If you don't know what a bonfire aesthetic is, it's an item that you can burn at a bonfire which makes the area within the confines of that bonfire slightly harder. It puts it up one more level, game-wise, depending on what level your game is currently at. Meaning, if you use a bonfire aesthetic in the exile holding cells, that whole area will act as if it's in New Game Plus. Meaning any items and enemies that would spawn in New Game Plus in that area will spawn. Don't worry though, using a bonfire aesthetic at one bonfire will not affect any other bonfire in the game. This means using one of the XL holding cells will not affect any other bosses in the Lost Bastille or any other bonfires. Meaning that bosses such as the Boon Sentinels and the Sinner will not get any harder as a result. There are ways of farming bonfire aesthetics though, and I will be detailing them in a future video. One more thing about the bonfire aesthetics. Using a bonfire aesthetic will cause red phantoms to spawn, but they shouldn't be that tough. The red phantoms will essentially become stronger versions of enemies already in that area. The bonfire aesthetic will also reset the items in the area, meaning items such as a soul vessel will respawn, provided that the item is not stored within a metal chest. This means any item stored within a wooden chest or just lying around the floor will respawn every time a bonfire aesthetic is used.